Today in the news, it looks like if you want AMD's next generation CPU, well, you're gonna need a new cooler. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. When AMD introduced Ryzen CPUs, it was clear that uh, they had a different philosophy from Intel for the future of its chips. With Zen Plus, they gained about a 10% increase in clock speed and didn't change the power envelope. When Zen 2 came around with the uh, chiplet model, AMD claimed it got the same performance at half the power envelope of the previous generation, all that thanks to the seven nanometer process. And of course, with the current Zen 3 models, AMD continued with that same power efficiency. They were able to deliver a 19% IPC increase across their lineup when compared to Zen 2. And all of that while still consuming about the same amount of power. I mean, the old eight core 2700X would use a peak of 131 watts, while the 16 core 5950X uses just a little more at 143 watts. Now that's impressive. Intel, on the other hand, well, they didn't really care about how much power their chips used. I mean, the 10850K peaks at something like 260 plus watts. Talk about a space heater. According to a leak though, things are about to change. This information comes from Patrick Schur over on Twitter. This guy has been pretty damn accurate during the last couple of releases from the red team. And the news he just shared shows that AMD is probably going to break that efficiency streak just a little. According to him, the TDP values of the Zen 4 consumer chips would go like this, 65 watts, 95 watts, and 105 watts. Up to there, all things are similar to Ryzen 5000 CPUs based on Zen 3, but there would also be a 120 and 170 watt CPU. Now, I know what you might say, that's not the listed TDP. It has to be the peak power output, kind of like how the uh, 10900K is a 95 watt CPU, but obviously, it can suck up more than 260 watts. Well, he specifically mentioned that this would actually be the listed TDP on the chip. And if we look at Zen 2 and Zen 3's power consumption, that means that this new CPU could suck up easily up to 230 watts. You might also think that it makes sense. AMD could be increasing the core count on Raphael to 24 cores, so that could account for the extra power. Well, he specifically mentions that this is for a 16 core CPU. So yeah, another possibility is simply that AMD won't skimp on the iGPU or integrated graphics. Raphael is supposed to sport a Navi 2X based graphic. And uh, as we know from previous G series and mobile processors, from the company, AMD doesn't really like to skimp on that. So a portion of that TDP can be attributed to that. So that's another theory. But why is the title about a cooler then? Well, it's because you'll need a pretty beefy solution for those CPUs, and I mean really beefy. As noted in an LTT video about the Corsair 1, even a standard 240 millimeter AIO from Corsair isn't enough to truly cool a 5900X, that's a 12 core CPU, let alone a 5950X to its fullest potential. Linus had to go up to a 360 millimeter rad for the CPU loop alone, and that got him an extra 5.4% in performance. CSGO being a CPU intensive game means that this difference is definitely due to the bigger radiator. And that's for a 105 watt CPU that can pull up to 140 some watts. Like I said earlier, there would be a 120 watt CPU and at that TDP, well, you might already need a better cooling solution to get the most out of your chips since it could, once again, based on my uh, Zen 3 averages, pull around 160 some watts alone. Another thing is if we look at AMD's last generation, the TDP of these chips doesn't necessarily go up with the core count. The 5800 X, for example, has a TDP of 105 watts, and it's not afraid to go toe to toe with the 16 core power consumption. So that means that a next generation eight core might also have a TDP of 120 or even 170 watts. Now there are rumors saying that this 170 watt CPU would be for a special variant, maybe an XD, maybe a special edition, or maybe that it's just the highest model, but that leaves us with a few 120 watts model that are possible. So what are your thoughts on AMD increasing the TDP for a higher end model? I mean, at this point, you might legitimately have to upgrade your power supply simply for the sake of the CPU. Let me know what you think down below. 
Anyways, guys, that's pretty much it for the catch up. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Drop a like if you liked it, a comment if you want to talk about today's stories. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video, right here to subscribe to the channel. My girlfriend's behind the camera and she's mim mimicking me because she knows all the lines on my outro. Anyways, don't forget to stay frosty, guys, and I'll see you on the next one. Snap for me, snap. Ah, she did it. Thank you.